Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Would you introduce yourself to the jury? Patricia Lloyd, L-O-Y-D, 1-L. And where do you live, Ms. Lloyd? Uh, Reach Point Drive. Where is that, ma'am? With my daughter. All right, Ms. Lloyd, you're really soft-spoken. Can the jury hear her? Are you having trouble? I guess it's just me. Go ahead. And which daughter do you live with, ma'am? Tanya. Okay. Um, and do you know uh, Mark Heath? Yes, I do. How do you know Mark Heath, ma'am? He's my son. Okay. Um, now, have you had any health problems uh, in the recent past that may affect your memory? Yes, I do. Can you explain that to the jury? I have had a cerebral aneurysm and ape calling, and I have two dormant. Okay. Um, now I want to talk to you a little bit about um, Marquis's father. Who is Marquis's father? Robert Wayne Lloyd. And where did you meet him? Uh, on the base, McCoy, Air Force Base. And where was that, ma'am? Uh, on the base, uh, McCoy, Air Force Base. Well, what state was that in? Here, Orlando, Florida. Okay. And how old were you when you met him? Uh, 16. And how old was he? 19. Okay. Did you guys, were you guys in a relationship? Yes. Did you get married? At the age of 16. Okay. And who was your first child? Dana Lloyd. Okay. And how old is Dana now? Um, 45. Okay. And who was your second child? Marquise Lloyd. And how old is Marquise? 43. Okay. Where was Marquise born? Um, South Dakota. And what were you doing in South Dakota? Uh, his father was in the military, Air Force Base. Okay. Uh, and during the period of time that you were together, was the father around? Yes, he was. Okay. How long were you together? Um, got married in 73, and I don't remember them. I don't remember the year. Okay. Do you know about how many years you guys were together? Yes, um, about four or five. Okay. And what happened? Why did you stop being together? Um, he was violent. W would you explain to the jury what you mean by that? He, um, it was an incident that Mark Keith's grandfather owned a club, and we was going to the club that night, and he didn't want uh, me to go. So in terms, you know, I, I told him, if you don't want me to go, I could stay home. And by then, uh, he had slept. And did, was there more, more than one occasion that he would, you would have problems with him? Yes. Explain to the jury what other problems you had with him. Uh, as uh, on the base, Seymour Johnson Air Force Base, uh, I had an incident with him that uh, he hit me in my eye. Uh, I went to the hospital. I didn't press charges. And um, what are some of the reasons that he would get angry? He got angry at one time, one point that um, he said my mother and my sister didn't let him raise Dana. So he used to get mad with that. And he in turn uh, like put Dana in a corner in, uh, in a red chair and she stayed at it until I got home. Now, during the period of time that you were together, did you ever get into a fight where you did something to Mark Keith while he was there? Yes. Could you uh, tell, tell the jury what that is? That was the same incident that I didn't go, um, I didn't, he didn't want me to go to the club. So uh, 
in terms of when he slapped me, I in terms I had Marquise in my arms. So I uh I kinda like threw Marquise like a football pass and he caught him. By the time that he caught him, he laid him down. And by the time he looked up, I had got a uh, fish tank and uh, hit him with it. Did he, did he show any anger because of Dana crying? Yeah, Dana had groin pains at night. And she used to have pains from like seven, seven at night to about, uh, I mean 11 at night and seven in the morning, her pain would last. And uh, when Mark Keith bo uh, was born, did his relationship with Dana change? Um, yeah. Did you tell the jury about that? Dana and um, uh, Dana was the oldest, so she basically took care of the chores and everything, and then Mark Keith. Uh, took care of the house for supplying food or whatever thing that he can help with, he did. Did, how old was Marquise when Robert died? Uh, Marquise was three or four. Did you tell Marquise um, how he died? No, it's later on. What did you tell him? The death, the death certificate read, plenary heart attack due to the cause of an overdose. Drugs. Right. Now you mentioned that he hit you, I think, in the eye. Did you have to go to the hospital? Yes, I had to go to the hospital. They had to secure my room. Uh, black, with black, uh, blackout all the way around. And uh, when I got out of the hospital, uh, my key father had to take the kids and put them in the daycare. I didn't know uh, daycare or they kept them because I couldn't see about them. Okay, now, uh did you live in Orlando after he died? Yes, I did. And did you receive any benefits from Robert after his death? Yes. Could you explain to the jury what kind of benefits you received? Spouse benefits, and uh, they paid me to take care of my kids. And, um, I worked. Do you remember what year Robert died? 79. Okay. And did you take the children to the funeral? Yes, I did. Okay. After that, after his father died, did Mark Heath ever bond with another male? No. So, um, I want to talk about Mark Heath being in school a little bit. Did there come a time when you found out that um, he was having some problems in school? Yes, I did. Can you tell the jury what that was? Uh, Marquise was passing all his schoolwork, and I later on found out that in third grade that he could not read. So I was asking him, how did he pass all the courses? And he said that the other children read it to him, and he did the work. Did you take him to church when he was a child? Very much so. Can you tell the jury what kind of church activities he was involved in? He was, um, it was very, uh, the church that we was in did a lot of things with the youth, and he was engaged into all that, and he sung in the choir. He loved singing. How did he sing? Uh, loud and proud. Me and one of the uh, church members used to say that, uh, she used to tell me, that's her son. I said, no, that's my son. She said, no, I said, that is my son, Sing. Now, up to the age of 13, where did you guys live? 
when Mark Heath was up to the age of 13? Oh, uh, from Carver Shores to Richmond, to, not Carver Shores to Pine Hills. Okay, so when did you move, how old was Mark Heath when you moved from Carver Shores to Pine Hills? Um, Mark Heath has to be about, um, about 10, 11. And what was Mark Heath doing when he was a young man between the ages of 10, 11, 12, 13? as in regards to where he would hang out? Uh, over in town. Would be hanging out on the streets? Right. Did there come a time uh, when you started spending less time with the children? Yes, I did. Can you tell the jury when that was and why that was? Um, I started hanging with a uh, different uh, set of people and uh, we used to uh, go off and party. And who would take care of the, the children? Dana and Mark Heath. Okay, you had, besides Dana and Mark Heath, did you have three other children? Yes, I do. And what are their names? Barry Jacobs, Tanya Lord, and Giovanna Lord. Okay, and, and was Dana and Mark Heath Robert's children? Right. Who were the other children, their, their father? Um, Giovanna's father is Danny Harris. Tanya's father is um, Donald Palmer. And Barry Jacob's father is Barry Sr. Now, did you discipline your children? Yes, I did. Can you describe the discipline you used with your children? Um, whatever by means. Um, I had an aunt at one time called my mother, and she told my mother uh, to whip me with a stinging cord. So uh, my mother did, and they got But they also uh, switch, broom, whatever. So you, you, you used the same thing that was used on you? Right. Did there come a time when you found out that Marquise was kidnapped? Yes. How old was Marquise? Uh, I would say uh, about 17. Okay. Would you tell the jury how you found out about it and what happened? My sister called me uh, and told me to come to the house, my mother's house. She told me that uh, someone had jumped on Marquis, and, and I told her I wasn't coming. She said, you gotta come, you gotta come. So I went to the house and... And, Mark, and what did you see when you went to the house? Marquis opened the door, and you heard the uh, movie Elephant Man. He looked like Elephant Man. Everything was just shifted. So, describe what you saw. Oh, his mouth was here. His face was just like, it seemed like it was in the back. He was just uh, swole. He couldn't see out but uh, a glare out of one eye. And did you take him to the hospital? Yeah, I took him to the hospital. And did, how long was he in the hospital? Uh, a day or two. Uh, did you go to the police? I went to the police. And what happened? They didn't take it serious. After that event happened, did anything change about Marquis? Yeah. What changed? Uh, he didn't trust the police. He, uh, he, he, he wasn't right. He wasn't right something. He wasn't right. Did you find out at some point that Marquise was selling drugs? 
Yes, I did. Did you catch him with money? Yes, I did. Did you take the money away from him? Yes, I did. Okay. Did he give you money at times to help you take care of the family? Yes, he did, whatever. Light bill, a mortgage, whatever that I needed, he gave it to me. Did there come a time when you took him to a place called Laurel Oaks? Yes. How old was he at that time? Oh, he was young. Oh, uh, I want to say nine. He was young. Tell, tell us about Laurel Oaks. What happened at Laurel Oaks? Uh, my nephew, my sister was taking him to Laurel Oaks. So as we was there, Markeith got inquisitive. He wanted to know what was going on and how things go on into a place like that. So we ended up, uh, my sister insurance didn't take him. So Markeith, the insurance we had, it took. So Markeith signed himself up in there. And so they, they, he agreed to go into Laurel Oaks? Yes. What was Laurel Oaks? It was like a mental institute. And, and why did you think he needed to go there? Um, Marquis held a lot of stuff within, you know, in, in being, uh, taking care of me, uh, his sister, his brother. So, you know, he was what we, we had. Did they try to medicate him while he was there? Yes. And did he convince you to check him out of there? Right. He uh, called me. He said, Mama, come get me. Uh, the medicine has me drowsy and dopey, and I'm just falling around. He said, come get me. So I went and uh, tried to get him out. In 1996, um, someone by the name of Wesley was murdered. Who is that? My sister's son. And tell, tell me how you found out about it and how Marquise was involved. Someone came to my mother's house and told my mother that, uh, my sister, that her son had got shot. And uh, so we started calling around. My sister called me. I called Mark Keith, and we were just calling different members uh, to go on the scene. And did Mark Keith go to the scene? Yes, Mark Keith went to the scene. He was very distraught. Was he very, very close to Wesley? Very close. All the kids was close. And did he um, say anything about what he saw? Yeah, he seen uh, Mother get something to cover him up. He's cold. You know, he just laying there, you know, helping. Was he crying? Yes, he was fiercely. When uh, Marquise was a teenager, um, did he look out for other people? Yes, he did. Could you tell the jury about that? Uh, Marquise brought uh, plenty of people to the house. Uh, one of the guys, Martin, Damian Martin, uh, his mama and father was on drugs, and he was staying with his older brother, and they in turn went to prison. So uh, Markeith and all the guys that he was with, they took turns keeping Martin and Marco. And for two weeks, everybody had him for two weeks. So by the time Markeith two weeks came around, you know, he, just, he brought him home. He said, Mom, you got to keep him. He don't have anywhere to go. And asked me would I take care of him. I talked with Martin, Marco's grandmother, and she didn't want him, so he ended up staying with her. Did he, did he, there was an occasion where he had some people living in a garage with you? Yes, uh, some girls ran away, and uh, their mother called me and was telling me that the girls stayed at my house, and I'm like, no. She said, ma'am, did you cook collard greens? Did you cook ham, 
cornbread. I said, yes. She said, that's what they <coughs> ate. So I said, ma'am, let me call you back. So when I went to Marquise, his sisters and brother, and asked them who let them in the house, where did they stay? Marquis said that he let them come in. He hid them in the garage. When I went to bed, he brought them out and fed them. And in turn, the, uh, the next day, it was done over and over till uh, the lady called me. And while he was, was, was there times he was basically living on the streets? Yes. Okay. And would he still keep in touch with you? Yes, he did. And still give you money? Yes. Uh, I'm showing you what's been marked as uh, defendant's AP for identification purposes. Can I approach Judge? Yes. Yeah. Do you recognize that, ma'am? Yes, I do. Um, what is it? This is a picture of uh, my sister kids, both of my sister kids and mine. This is a total toy of. Okay, I move that into evidence. Any objections? Okay. All right, this will be received without objection as defense exhibit number one for purposes of the penalty phase. May I publish this? Yes, sir. So tell me who's in this photograph. You have it in front of you? Yeah. Okay. Tell me who's in this photograph. Oh, to my left is Glenn, Dana. She's holding Barry. Tanya is behind Dana. Giovanna is next to Tanya. Uh, Wesley. When, no, 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 no. William. William, then Wendell, Shanika, Jesse, Mark Heath, uh, Cree, and Wesley. And so besides your children, whose children are in this photo? My sisters. Okay, and your sister's name is? Lorraine and Jackie. Okay. And the person, Wesley, is he the person who was killed? Wesley is the one that got killed. Okay, which one is he? He's standing uh, behind Cree. Cree has the white uh, in his shirt. And when was this picture taken, ma'am? Uh, this was uh, at church. We were doing uh, directory at the church, and this was uh, the picture that we took as a family. And everybody rushed in the room because they wanted to see how they was going to put everybody in the picture. Because so many of them, they said. Okay. Um, I want to talk to you about when um, Mark Keith was arrested for battery on a law enforcement officer. Do you remember that, ma'am? Yes. Before the day that that happened, did he have an injury to his hand? Yes, he did. Okay, and what kind of injury did he have? My key was cut from here to here. Um, and um, was he using the cast during that period of time? Yes, he was using the cast. Did, were there times that he would take the cast off? Yes, he would take the cast off at times. The doctor told him at times to take it off and uh, put it back on. Did there come a time when you received information that uh, Markeith had been arrested? Yes. How did you find that out? Um, someone called me Who called and you? Uh, a friend. Okay. And told me to, uh, that Markeith had got arrested that morning. And this was like 12 o'clock. He still uh, wasn't in the system. I had a friend, uh, the commissioner of District 6. I called him and asked him to find him. Why did you do that? Because that was that morning that this occurred. 
and there's a 12 midnight, Marquise was not in the system. What were you worried about? I was worried about um, them hurting him, them killing him, them beating him. So as I called the commissioner, I said, find my son. He called me, a phone call. Marquis said that the phone rang where he was, he had him blindfolded. And the phone rang. Next thing he knew, they was taking the blindfold off, taking him, booking him in 33rd. And did Marquis tell you what happened? About why he was blindfolded? Yeah. He said they was. Sustained. Did there come a time that Marquis went to prison? Yes. And did you keep in contact with him while he was in prison? All t at all times. And how would you keep in contact with him? I called. I kept money on the books so he can call. Uh, I took the kids, his children. I took them to see him. Okay. Who are his children? He have a son, Marquis Jr., and a daughter, Kiana Lloyd. Okay. And how old is Kiana? Kiana is 25. And does she have any children? She have one girl. And how old is the girl? Uh, five. What's her name? Kalia. So Marquis has a granddaughter that's five years old? Yes, he do. And what about his son? His son is in uh, Gainville in a mental institution. Okay. His son is institutionalized because of a mental illness. Right. Is that right? Right. And how old is his son? Uh, 21. Um, what was Marquis' belief about his relationship with his children? He loved it, his children. Oh, wow, that's good. Go ahead, Mr. He loved it, his kids. Was it important to him to have a relationship with his children? Yes, it was. While he was in prison? Yes. Would you describe your family as close? Yes. Was there a time when Markeith changed his belief system? Yes. Tell the jury about that. Um, his belief system, uh, he, he believed in God. He don't believe that God has a son. He don't uh, eat meat. Um, and Strange. The belief is strange. It wasn't anything that I was brought up on that I raised him on. Was there an occasion when he was stabbed in prison that you became aware of? Yes. In terms, I got another call saying that uh, Mark Keith had been stabbed with the ice pick an inch from his heart. What about his belief system of people wanting to kill him? Are you familiar with that? Yes. Tell, tell the jury about that. He was always feared of his life. Being incarcerated at an early age, and uh, he just feared. It was his upbringing. Um, and like uh, you were saying that he watched Roots, he watched that 
is mine. It was, it was strange. Did you see that after he rele was released from prison? Yes. Did he change? Yes, he changed. Tell the jury how he changed. He changed. The belief was I didn't find it to be right. He changed uh, just trying to hold focus on being Marquis and helping people. He changed in a daily struggle of, be, of being killed. Did he become paranoid? Very so much. Did he talk about that paranoia? Yes, he talked about the paranoia. What about his relationship with you when he got out of prison? Did that change? Marquis loved me. He loved me. I'm showing you what's been marked as exhibit number AO. Do you recognize this photograph? Yes, I do. And what is it? This is my birthday, and this is my sister Jackie, my baby sister Jackie and Marquise. Okay, I move that into evidence. Any objections? All right, this will be received without objection as defense exhibit two for the purpose of penalty phase. And when was that photograph taken? Um, it was at Dana House. Publish, please. You guys publish? Okay. Oh, there it is. Okay. And was that after Marquise got out of prison? Yes, it was. I'm showing you what's been marked as Defense Exhibit AN. May I approach, Judge? Yes, sir. Do you recognize this photograph, ma'am? Yes, I do. What is it? This is uh, me and Marquis siblings. Okay, uh, move this into evidence, A.N. Any objection? Okay. All right, this will be received without objection as defense exhibit number three for purposes of the penalty phase. Ask to publish it. Granted. Can you tell me who's in this photograph that you have in front of you? Uh, that's Giovanna in the white sweater. That's me in the middle. That's Dana with the earned shirt on. Marquis uh, behind me with the t-shirt. Barry is behind uh, Giovanna, and that's Tanya at the end. So th these are your children? Right. These are his siblings? Yes, they do. Does Marquis still keep in touch with you? Yes, he do. How often do you talk to him? Two or three times a day. Do you visit him at the jail? Yes, I do. Do you love him? Very much so. If he goes to prison, will you visit him? Yes, I will. Will you always be in his life? Yes, I will. And do you believe Marquis to be kind and loving? Yes. I have no further questions. You can, you can take that now. Cross. Thank you, Your Honor. You know, I'm not going to keep you long and I ask you a few questions, but I do want to ask you a few. Do you remember? Last month, you came down here to the courthouse complex and you gave a deposition in this case? Yes. Do you recall that? And I was there, Mr. Buxman was there, 
Mr. Marrero was there, Ms. O'Shea was there, in addition to the court reporter. Do you remember that, that time? I don't remember you. You don't remember me? Okay. Me. <laughs> I have that effect on a lot of people. Okay, so, but you remember the deposition? Right. You remember being asked about any changes that had occurred to Mark Keith while he was in prison? No. Do you recall being asked page 10, line 18? When he came back from prison, when he was released from prison and returned to Orlando, did you see any change in him from the time he had gone to prison to the time he came back? And you answered, I saw the son that went in, came out the same son. I'm sorry, you saw your answer, I saw the same son. Question on page 11, line eight. So your feeling was he was basically the same person he was when he went in? Yes. You recall answering those questions that way, ma'am? Yes. Now about the incident involving the, the beating where you, you said he was unrecognizable. <clears throat> You recall being asked some questions about that? Not really. Okay. You remember being asked if you saw any changes in his behavior as a result of that beating? No. You recall being asked, <clears throat> page 19, line 4. Did you notice any changes in your son, Markeith Lloyd, before that incident and then afterwards? Did he change in any way to you as his mother? No, not to me. I didn't see anything. Do you recall being asked that and giving that answer? No. Now you indicated that the, the death certificate for your husband, your late husband, indicated that he died of a drug overdose? Preliminary heart attack due to the cause of an overdose. Okay. You recall being asked about his cause of death in the deposition? Yes. Do you recall what your answer was? No. You recall being asked, page 5, line 22, what were the circumstances of Mr. Lloyd's death? And by that I mean, I just mean natural, accidental, or other. I don't need to know all the details. Your answer, I'm trying to remember, I think it read suicide. I don't remember you don't, saying it. You don't remember giving those answers? No. Thank you, ma'am. I have no other questions, ma'am. Redirect. Suicide, you remember that there was something about drugs on the death certificate. Is that right? Right. Like an overdose? Right. Did you tell the prosecutor that you believed that he never physically recovered from the beating he took on page 20, lines 3 through 9? Right. Would you like me to show you that? Yes. Just look where I... Oh, okay. Is that what you told the prosecutor? Yes.
Do you remember telling the prosecutor when he asked you if there was any changes that you can think of pre the incident when he went to the hospital and then afterwards and you said, I can't recall. You remember telling him that? Yes. Do you remember you telling him that he stuttered before the incident? Yes. What do you mean by that? Um, in talking, he'll, he'll repeat itself uh, 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 and do uh, that stuttering. And did that change after the incident? No. Have you told this jury to the best of your ability what you remember? Yes. To the best of my ability. Are you taking medication? Yes, I am. What are you taking? Uh, I'm taking blood, blood thinners for the aneurysm. I'm taking... Uh, Neuro pills. I'm taking. Uh, I'm a diabetic. Uh, taking insulin um, pills. About twelve different pills a day. How old are you? Sixty-three. And when when did you have this issue with the aneurysm? Uh, Two thousand. No, 99 was the first aneurysm. And you had others after that? Right. When was that? Uh, every year for the first five years, I was having uh, the bleeding, and they had to cord them off. Like, uh, I have, like I said, I have two dormant. I'm waiting uh, to go in the hospital to see about those. Thank you, ma'am. All right, thank you, ma'am. You can step down. All right, folks, um, do you have a witness you can put on in 10 minutes? I'm sorry? Do you have a witness you can put on in 10 minutes? No. All right, All right we're going to take a lunch break. We'll be back um, with the witnesses starting at 1.30 this afternoon. I'll see you all then. Thank you.